Hi, my name is Noah Farrow, and today we're going to talk about the Speeman Mangold Organizer and how it forms. The human body is in a sphere with no defined axes. Rather, we have clear, distinct sections of our body. The top of our body, or interior, is very different when compared to the bottom, or posterior. And we have a clearly defined axis that shows our front, or ventral side, versus our back, or dorsal side. But how do these axes form? If we look back at one of the earliest points in our development, as in 10 hours after you were fertilized, we can see an early gastrula, where cells from the outside of the embryo are making their way to the inside via this small lip that we call the dorsal lip. This section of the embryo contains special cells that will both directly and indirectly start the chain of cell divisions and specifications that will give you the defined axes that we just discussed. Knowing that, we call this section of the gastrula the Speeman Mangled Organizer, as it is the kickoff to the organization of your entire body. A study by Hilda Mangold and Hans Speeman discovered the organizer in 1924, when they transplanted this section of the gastrula into the ventral side of another gastrula in a tadpole. And once the host fully developed, it was seen that another new body axis formed with its own head, eyes, spine, etc., proving the importance and requirement of the organizer in axis induction. Now we know what the Speeman Mangold organizer is, but how exactly does it form? To figure this out, we have to go even earlier in the developmental timeline, to before you were even fertilized as an egg. For some context, an, a, an egg has an animal pole and a vegetal pole, creating two distinct hemispheres in the cell. The animal pole has polar bodies that attract and attach to sperm and start the fertilization process, while the vegetal pole is yolky and provides nutrition for the rest of the cell. When a sperm fertilizes the egg at the cap of the animal pole, it donates a centriole, which creates fibers called microtubules that connect to the cytoplasm along the edges of the egg, called the cortex. Despite the sperm's entry point, Opposite of the sperm's entry point is a key location called the Nyakup center, which we will get back to later, so remember it. Immediately following the fertilization of the egg, the microtubules pull on the cortex and cause a 30-degree rotation of the cortex. The midline between the animal cap of the cortex and the vegetal part forms what will be the boundary between the ventral and dorsal sides of the embryo. The gray crescent, which can be clearly seen via microscope, is a determinant sign that the cortical rotation functioned correctly and that the cell now has some sort of orientation. Another important part about this rotation is the migration of cells with the DSH protein that were originally at the bottom of the vegetal pole. Now, they were located on the furthest dorsal part of the cell and will be crucial to the creation of the Speeman Mangled Organizer. Immediately following the cortical rotation, the egg's animal pole begins to interact with the vegetal pole. The vegetal pole contains a gradient of activin and VEGT, two signal proteins that induce the creation of one of the germ layers of the embryo, the mesoderm, that the Speeman organizer forms from. However, if you remember, the Speeman organizer was only on the dorsal side of the embryo. So what makes the dorsal side's mesoderm different from that of the ventral side? In fact, it is another signaling molecule and protein, called beta-catenin. The cells with the DSH protein on the dorsal side of the cortex are able to accumulate and stabilize beta-catenin through a DSH signaling pathway. As a result, a gradient similar to that of the activin and VEGT protein gradients forms specifically in the most dorsal part of the embryo. A combination of high beta-catenin, high VEGT, and high activin are all needed to induce the creation of the Speeman Mangled Organizer. The location of this high concentration area is right around the Nyakup center, and as a result, the dorsal lip begins to form at the beginning of gastrulation exactly at that spot. Beta-catenin's importance in the creation of the Speeman Mangled Organizer was proved in 1994 by Janet Heisman and her team at the Institute of Human Genetics. What they did was take an antisense oligonucleotide that was the complementary RNA of the strand that produced beta-catenin in cells and injected it into the dorsal side of the embryo. 
By doing this, they were able to greatly reduce the production and accumulation of beta-catenin in the embryo, resulting in an embryo without a body axis as it matured, meaning that the dorsal mesoderm had similar phenotypes to that of the ventral mesoderm. Now you know how the spemen or mangled organizer was discovered, how it gives your body orientation, and how it is formed at the early stages of development. Thank you.